Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So here I got a 2020 Vespa GTS 300 HPE Yacht Club Edition. 2021, I don't think they have this edition, so this is kind of a rare bird now. Only was a one year because prior to 20, the earlier generation GTS, they also had the Yacht, Yacht Club Edition. Um, well, I wanted to talk about something. If for the, the reliability and what's going on with the Vespa GTS HPE motor. For the most part, there's been very few warranty claims. Um, the unfortunate thing is they certainly burn a lot more oil than the prior GTS 300 model. Uh, and it's all how you ride it and how you use it. I've kind of like asked customers, my, my own service customers, like how they use their scooters. We've We've had some HPE GTSs already, like six. I have one or two that are even 12,000 miles here in San Diego, so they're already on their second service. I can tell you one thing. It's pretty hard to go 6,000 miles between a service, and if you never check the oil, you're going to have uh, no oil at some point, and it might damage the motor. And unfortunately, a couple of customers have found out the hard way. Um, so. Pretty much the solution, according to the Piaggio Vespa owner's mail, is to check the oil every ride. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, obviously you wanna walk around your scooter and make sure there's not a puddle of oil or coolant before you take off or it doesn't have flat tires, but I think appropriate uh, amount of times of checking the oil is maybe every other gas fill up. If you just wanna be on the safe side, you may be able to go five, 600 miles between uh, oil checks. But that's, that's just robot's opinion. But according to Vespa, every ride you need to check your oil. So yeah, I don't want my customers to run their scooters out of oil. That's no fun. Especially if warranty's not gonna pick up the repair. It's very expensive. I mean, unfortunately it's the owner's responsibility to make sure the tires are in good condition, the, the oils, the fluids are at the correct levels before they ride. Um, that's just kind of a given with any vehicle. I know modern cars, you can, a modern car that's a well-designed car, you can probably drive it 10,000 miles without opening the hood. Um, and I do wish these things didn't consume as much oil. But it, again, it's how you ride it. Um, I have some customers that warm them up a little bit. You know, they start it, I'm not talking the warm up where you let it sit for 15 minutes and the cooling fan cycling. I'm talking to warm it up for like 15 seconds before you're very easy on the throttle. And then when the temperature comes up the full operating temperature around 180 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there, um, then you can like romp on it, hop on the highway, do some full th throttle runs. And I would say on a normal like average spring day where it's like 65 degrees, uh, GTS would warm up in about five minutes of operation. So just five minutes of normal riding, but letting it sit here and wasting gas for 15 minutes is probably not the most appropriate warm up. That's kind of what you did with really old motors sometimes. But warming up, that's one thing that always helps with longevity of the motor. If you stress the motor, for instance, hypothetically, you live one block from a freeway exit. You start the scooter, on a day where it's 32 degrees out, super cold out, and then you immediately full throttle, hopping on the highway, that is, it thermally stresses the engine. So it's likely to consume more oil. You're gonna end up with more leakage from your gaskets. And I've seen that. I have 10 year old GTSs and I'm like, why is this one an oily mess at you know 25,000 miles while some other one is perfectly clean with no oil drips? I'm talking an oily mess where it's like leaking oil from the valve cover, the base gasket, the head gasket, the water pump. Well, somebody is, you know, they're thermally stressing the motor. They're getting on the gas a little too hard and bringing the motor up the operating temperature a little quick. And certain parts of the motor expand and contract at certain rates. And when that, that occurs, it stresses the, you know, the, the gaskets that go between these assemblies are stressed. Um, and that's always a problem. And I think you get much better motor longevity if you just take the simple task of just warm up for a tiny bit, 
and just be easy on it for the fi first five minutes and then go to town with it once the coolant's up the proper operating temperature. The other reason, the second reason that I believe these things consume oil is my customers that exclusively use these for commuting on the highway or they do highway trips. So they're running the motor at high RPMs for prolonged periods of time, you know, holding 70, 75 miles per hour, 110 kilometers per hour. Um, and in that case, you're just gonna consume more oil because you're running the motor at the much higher RPMs. Um, you get a lot more consumption past the rings. Um, so for all my customers here in San Diego, I always apply this little sticker right here. And I kind of wrote, it's what the factory recommends, is to check oil every gas stop, top off if needed. Or that's what I, you know, it's a little, it's in between what I think is appropriate and a little bit less than um, what Piaggio specifies, which is every ride. And that QR code um, takes you to that original video I did about a year and a half ago on or maybe not even that, about a year ago, that on checking the oil on the Vespa GTS HPE motors. Different than the prior models, um, but you know, something you definitely wanna do. Maybe you want your own personal reminder and you're not in the area, the part number is ST107 for that sticker. And for my customers, I usually put the sticker. There's this little sticker that has some bullshit about using gas gasoline up to 10% ethanol, don't use anything more. Well, it doesn't really apply because you're not buying the E85 gas. I just cover up part of that sticker and put the check oil, every gas stop sticker right under there. But if you want one for yourself, you can find it on our web store, scooterwest.com. And I've covered in the past how the checked oil, I just recently did a video on the, that wonderful oil pan that Peter makes in Germany that we sell at scooterwest.com um, that has the beautifully machined sight glass in there for always having a visual indicator of your oil. I think that's great. I just bought, recently bought a Triumph motorcycle. It's got a sight glass. The original ET4, my 1996 Vespa ET4 has a sight glass. I know it's extra expense. I wish Vespa just included on this otherwise wonderful scooter, but they don't, but you can certainly add it. So let's check the oil. This thing's got 1,700 miles on the clock. Uh, I have no idea if the previous owners checked it. It just got traded in, actually. It's a beautiful scooter. And it's a little harder even with the dipstick. The motor's cold. Uh, this is a dangerous task to do when it's hot. You know, if you're checking every gas stop. Maybe it came off the freeway. You're gonna be burning your hands trying to do this. Um, definitely not a wonderful design. I'll just get to the point. So, unthreading the dipstick from that water pump cover. Go ahead and wipe that clean. So you can see the dipstick right there. It's good. And then take the dipstick once it's wiped. FY, it's on the center stand, parked on a level surface. Go ahead and thread the dipstick all the way back in. You don't need to tighten it all the way down, but just thread it in. And obviously the most accurate oil level is when it's been sitting on the center stand cold for a little bit. That's where you get the most accurate oil reading. Sometimes it's hard to judge when the oil's hot and liquidy, and actually the oil level goes up a little bit, expands, so it will read higher than normal when it's warm. Pull the dipstick back out. And where are we? We are, so there's the top, there's the bottom. I would say we're at the one third mark. So it's still safe, but if this scooter's got 1,700 miles and no one checks it until this next service, the major service, 6,000 miles, it's likely to be very low. You know, maybe there'd be only 200 cc's left. Uh, to bring it from this bottom mark to this top mark, it's less than a quarter quart. So I would say this thing's about 150 cc's to 200 cc's uh, from bring it to the top mark. So it's about probably, you know, when we did the service at 625 miles, we brought it right up to the, the, the full mark on the dipstick. So it's probably burned mm, 150 cc's, 10% of the oil, or 
110 cc, somewhere in there, 10, 15 percent of the oil, the total oil capacity of the motor. So, you know, and I wouldn't use this to scare you from buying a new HP. The power is wonderful on these. You know, out of the box, it's a factory. Uh, they just got so much more torque than the outgoing 2019 GTS 300. Uh, just makes it so much more enjoyable to ride. And, you know, it's factory proven technology versus bolting on race parts such as a Melosi parts. And I can attest those things burn quite a bit of oil. I've run my own personal uh, scooters that have Melosi kits, pretty low on oil, which is my uh, robot sprint and the, um, my Mexico GTS. I've let them get a little low on oil a couple times by just going a little bit far between the gas stop. So it's not unusual for a high performance motor to consume some oil. So I hope that helped you guys out. If you do own a HPE GTS or if you're looking to buy one, or maybe you just want that sticker as a reminder for yourself. We, the reason we put those up for sale is we've had other shops call for that sticker because um, I think it's been announced that we have that sticker on our scooter or something that we sell here in San Diego. Thanks for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. Until next time.